Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be bringing you some Halloween, some spooky season book recommendations. I didn't think I would have a lot of books to talk to you guys about, but once I started pulling them off my shelves, I realized I had quite a few. I was never massively into Halloween as a kid. I wasn't really into dressing up. I didn't really get the fuss around getting loads and loads of sweets. As a kid and as a grown up, I really love chocolate, but like sweets, like fizzy sweets, like sugary sweets, didn't really do it for me. But now that I'm a grown up and Halloween for me anyways means parties and an excuse to dress up in a slutty outfit. I love Halloween. Although this year there will be no parties, so uh, all I have is books. <laughs> I don't love being scared. Like I kind of associate Halloween with like having fun as opposed to being scared. But I do have some scary books and some just like fun Halloween books. <laughs> the first book or rather the first author that I want to recommend is Angela Carter. Her novel Knights of the Circus is all about a person who is part woman part swan who joins the circus at the turn of the 19th century. It is quite a literary one so if that doesn't sound like it's something that you would like I would recommend The Bloody Chamber which is a collection of short stories. They are fairy tale retellings that really bring out the dark origins of these fairy stories and give them a kind of feminist twist. They're stories like Beauty and the Beast, Puss in Boots, and most famously from this collection, there's Little Red Riding Hood. It was adapted into a film by Neil Jordan called The Company of Wolves, which is really interesting viewing. It's kind of like an old horror film that like the special effects are so bad in it now that it's kind of laughable. I think fairy tale retellings that have kind of feminist spooky twists to them are perfect for Halloween time, especially as fairy tale characters are such common costumes around Halloween. And some other fairy tale retellings I would really recommend are Kissing the Witch by Emma Donoghue which definitely brings out some queer aspects of those traditional stories and also New World Fairy Tales by Cassandra Parkin. I'd also really recommend Lanny by Max Porter. This is a proof copy, the finished cover is much nicer. This is quite a literary experimental novel that is about what happens when a young boy goes missing. But the reason I think this is quite a spooky read is because of this creature in this book that is called Dead Papa Toothwort. We never really know exactly what kind of creature they are and I think the mystery of that is what is really spooky about this book. I also thought I would recommend some spooky classics. I think most of these are Victorian so if you are looking to focus on Victober this month then these would be a great way of participating in that readathon and having some spooky reads. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde is one of my favourite classics. This novel tells the story of a man who is very beautiful but quite corrupt, at least by the standards of the societal structures around him. We follow a lot of the scandalous things this main character gets up to, but where things get spooky is that our main character Dorian Gray has a painting made of him. He puts this painting in his attic and the image in the portrait takes on the signs of aging instead of Dorian Gray himself. I'd also like to recommend another book by an Irish author. This is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is seen as a masterpiece of the horror genre and I think a lot of people have conceptions of this book going into it. They don't necessarily match up with the actual content. This is told in diary entries. It's definitely like a lot more slow moving than I expected and it really explores Victorian sexuality. However, a book that I would actually recommend a bit more if you are interested in reading about some classic vampires is Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Lefanu. This book is much shorter. It's far more page turning and it's much more gay. <laughs> I think the Sherlock Holmes stories by Arthur Conan Doyle are other great Halloween-y reads because they're like spooky but they still feel quite cozy and safe. The one I would particularly like to recommend is The Hound of the Baskervilles, which explores a seemingly supernatural terror on the vast grounds of a country house. I'd also really recommend the short stories of Edgar Allan Poe. I've read most of his short stories, I think, because I studied them at university. The only one I still have a copy of is this little copy of The Telltale Heart. Edgar Allan Poe's stories are quite, like they are really spooky and kind of macabre. Is that how you pronounce that word? But I think sometimes the less you know about them going into them, the better. I also have quite a lot of middle grade and YA books because uh, I'm a was I guess the book that is kind of furthest up the spooky scale of these books for younger readers is Perfectly Preventable Deaths by Deirdre Sullivan and I think actually if you take away one recommendation from this video, let it be this one. This book follows 15 year old twins who are moved to quite a rural community in Ireland. There's a lot of mystery in this community around young girls who have gone missing and while these sisters were once really close, when they move they start to drift apart. Caitlin, who is the far more outgoing of the sisters, starts dating a guy that there's a lot of suspicion around 
around. And Madeline, who is the quieter of the two, comes to realize that she has powers that she never realized she had before. This is a kind of like lyrical fantasy thriller that has really seamlessly included queer representation and feminism. This was one of my favorite books that I read last year. I'd also really like to recommend the Perfect series. I have two, the first two books here, but I think there's a third book in the series as well, which I'm really excited to get to. So we have A Place Called Perfect and The Trouble with Perfect. These are by Helena Duggan, another Irish author. Wow, we really nail spooky. This book follows a young girl named Violet and what happens when her family move to a town called Perfect. But as soon as Violet arrives there, she realizes there is something really strange about this town. She keeps hearing voices, her mom is acting bizarre and her dad has disappeared. And when she meets an equally mysterious boy, named Boy, who we learn more about in the second book, she realizes that it's not just her dad who has disappeared. These are kind of uncanny, creepy. If Coralie and Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and a series of unfortunate events and a Tim Burton film all got in a melting pot, you would have this series. And equally, I think a series of unfortunate events is great for spooky season. Another couple of middle grade books I want to recommend are The Secret of Platform 13 by Eva Ibbotson and Beyond Platform 13 by Eva Ibbotson and Sybil Pounder. In the first book, The Secret of Platform 13, a prince is stolen from the king and queen who live on the island of mist and there is like a portal from the island of mist to london that opens once every nine years and the prince is stolen in one of those like windows where the portal is open so the king and queen have to wait another nine years before they try and get their son back and this book follows four mysterious figures who go through the portal in an attempt to find the prince and we are mainly focused on odge gribble who is a hag in beyond platform 13 we follow odge when she's a little bit older when she again goes through this portal and ends up with a companion that didn't expect to be on this adventure. Obviously these books are witchy, there's a lot of fantasy and magic in them, but they're not scary. They're like, they're definitely not scary. They're like cozy reads. And the final book I want to recommend is the ultimate cozy read, and that is Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell that has illustrations by Faith Erin Hicks. This is a graphic novel that is set on an American pumpkin patch. And when I think of a pumpkin patch, I think of like basically some farmland where you just go and grab a few pumpkins. But in America, I think they're just like a huge thing. Like the pumpkin patch in this graphic novel is so fun, so exciting. There's loads of like food stalls and activities. And in this book, we follow Dea and Josea who have worked together at this pumpkin patch every autumn. And this is the final time they're gonna be working together. So they decide that they need to enjoy their final night. It's just so, so much fun. You will read this in one sitting and I would really recommend like reading it when you're all cozy. I I think I'll definitely reread this at Halloween. And my Halloweeny read for this year is Hag, which is an anthology of short stories about all things witchy. So if you wanna hear what I think about that, I will be telling you my thoughts in my October wrap up. So that is it. They are my Halloween spooky season recommendations. Let me know if you're reading anything particularly spooky this month. And if you haven't done so already, please do hit the subscribe button if you wanna hear me talk about more things bookish. I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video.